everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the former. Today we are looking at Pengi, which was a 1987 release by Red Rat Software and developed by a guy called N.A. Murray. And to be honest, that's pretty much all the information I can find out about this game, uh, aside from the fact that it is a very obvious, complete ripoff of Sega's Pengo, which was first released in 1982. And uh, this was not at all uncommon practice uh, during that period. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty, pretty gratuitous example of, uh, of cloning. So here we are, here's the packaging. I kind of miss this old style packaging. It's very sort of space efficient. It's sort of a, a plastic wallet with um, an inlay inside it. And then inside you just have everything tucked away quite neatly in there. So it's quite sort of low budget packaging I associate it with, but, um, and yeah, that extends to the, uh, what I can laughably call the instruction manual as well, which is this sheet of paper here. <laughs> so, uh, loading instructions, place disc in drive A and switch on computer. Place arrow over pengi.prug box and double click left mouse button. Now follow on-screen instructions. So here we are, here's the, here's the story. Here's the story for Pengi. Eddie the penguin lives in a castle constructed from blocks of ice. It's a fine home, except for the snow ghouls and ghosts that haunt it. Eddie can slide his ice blocks around to change the makeup of his rooms. He can also use them to bring the snow ghoul's lives to an untimely end. To move Eddie around his home, use the joystick in port one, blah, 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 blah. You know how to play Pengo, hopefully. If you don't, you'll probably recognize it as soon as I start playing. You push blocks around, you squash things. That's pretty much it. Anyway, let's go play Pengi. Okay, here we are with Pengi from Red Rat Software, copyright N.A. Murray 1987. As I say, that's pretty much all we know about this game. Aside from the fact it is a gratuitous ripoff of Pengo. Um, yeah, so if you never played Pengo, here is how it works. You have a maze made out of ice blocks. You control a penguin, and it is your job to rid each level of all of the monsters by pushing ice blocks through them. That's the, the basic technique you need to do. Um, now, you can provide yourself with an additional little challenge if you want to by making use of these square blocks. And what these do, you'll notice when there's two of them touching each other, um, they start sparkling like that. I've already messed this up. So you can also press this to jiggle them around into a different layout. Let's see if we can do this. So we just need to stay one step ahead of the enemy there. Uh, so if we just... Oh, fuck it. He's dead. Anyway, I'll try again on the next level. Basically what happens if you line all four of them up next to each other, then you get a big point bonus, which is very nice. Uh, oh, no, go away. Rearrange these, thank you very much. Right, that's better. And we've got a bit more control over what we can do with them. Okay, so let's let's clear out some enemies first. So you see the egg meter over on the right-hand side of the screen. That tells you how many enemies there are left to defeat. Uh, so there's three left, which are all the ones that are on screen at the moment. That's straightforward enough. Again, let's try and get it down to just one left to deal with, if we can. Because it's just a little bit easier to deal with that way. So the mechanics with the ice blocks, as you can see, uh, they move. When you push them, they keep going until they hit something. Or until they hit something solid, I should say. So if they hit another ice block or one of the white blocks, then they will stop. If they hit an enemy, they'll keep going. And if you walk into one and try and push it when uh, there's nowhere for it to go, that will break it. And the enemies are capable of doing that as well. So you move, thank you very much. There we go, lovely big score bonus. Very nice indeed. Now we just have to deal with him. Nice. 
the other thing you can do is if there is an enemy up against a wall you can um, touch the wall to sort of shake the wall and that will stun them and while they're stunned in that way oh god oh god yes while they're stunned in that way you can uh, just walk over them to defeat them oh god but obviously there's a, a certain element of uh, forward planning required to do that there we go so I've stunned a Pac-Man looking dude there but he only stays stunned for a couple of seconds so you, you don't really have a lot of time to um, take advantage of that in the original I know you certainly got more points for um, smashing more enemies at the same time I don't know if that's the case here because I haven't been paying attention to my score I have other things to worry about and that block there has an egg inside it so as soon as you break that that will release the enemy within no game over well let's have another go after entering my name oh I can use capitals and everything Pete is the best at pen Pete is the best at pen that can be anything you can even make that into something rude if you want to Right, let's play again. Smash! And... Smash! And smash! Let's go for a happy time bonus smash. Right, you go over there. My cat is sitting next to me. She's snoring very loudly. I, I know this game isn't amazing, Meg, but, you know, show a little bit of respect. And the local motorcycle club appears to be having their nightly meeting outside as well. So that's nice. Yeah, so I mean, this isn't a bad game or anything. Um, it's just a bit lacking in a lot of ways. I mean, like the sound effects. I mean, we know that the sound effects are a commonplace that ST game. Oh no! Sound effects are a commonplace where ST games let themselves down, but uh, yeah, they're particularly feeble in this one. No, oh, no. Like, I don't think this was made in Stoss because I'm pretty sure Stoss came out much later than this. Um, Stoss is a basic-like programming language for the Atari ST um, that was pretty popular and went on to become what we now know as uh, Multimedia Fusion via a very convoluted process. Oh, hash Pit is even better at yeah there we go um no the reason i bring up stoss is that a lot of the sound effects in this they sound very much like the default built-in sound effects for stoss so in stoss you could like type shoot and it made the sound that pengi makes when he gets defeated in this i mean i i know that's just like a standard waveform that that sound chip was able to create um but still it feels like sort of one of the most low effort sound effects that there is on the ST anytime I hear that I just think oh it's the star shooting sound <laughs> alright you go there and then you go there oh no I want my bonus points But yeah, I mean, like I say, it's not an not an amazing game in its own right, but it's a pretty competent port of Pengi. Pengo. Pengu. Pengo. That was the original. Um, it's just the fact it came out five years after Pengo did that kind of made a few people think, well, you know, shouldn't we be doing something a little a little more than this by now? 
Not that Pengo's a bad game or anything. I'd rather like Pengo, but... Oh, no. No! But again, there was a certain element of... Almost... No! A certain element of almost snobbery in the 16-bit home computer era. Where people kind of thought that certain types of game were, were kind of beneath the new computers. And that particularly went for arcade-style games. So like, there was this assumption that with all this additional power and memory and disk space and that sort of thing, and you should be having more complex games and strategy games and simulations and that sort of thing. And arcade games, no. Those are for children. Those are for children. Poo. One more try. Uh, but as you can see, the advantage of arcade games is that they have a certain addictive quality about them. Which, yes, you can get in strategy games. I mean, we've all heard of Civ's Just One More Turn Syndrome, but... There's a very pleasant immediacy to a good arcade game that they're just isn't there for more complex affairs. Yeah, you get out of here. Uh -oh. This is only level one. This feels a lot tougher all of a sudden. I accidentally activated hard mode with my amazing pengi skills. Uh right, you get down there and then there and you go over there and you go there. <laughs> Excuse me, I fucked that up, haven't I? Uh never mind. Alright, let's kill this dude. Yeah boy. Come on. Gotcha. Right. Okay, let's have another go at the pushy, pushy, blocky puzzle puzzle. After dispatching all but one of my foes. Uh, and dying to one of them, of course. As is tradition. motorbikes are back. It's the local youths who think they're big and clever by racing up and down residential streets on a pathetic little motorbike with a 50cc engine. An incredibly noisy motorbike with a 50cc engine, I might add. That was nicely done, wasn't it? I was pleased. Right. So, we bung that one there. And. Ooh. You're in my way, Pac Man. Oh. Why must you be so awkward? Right, you go there. And then, yeah, I got it. And then you go there. And then I push you up there and get a huge bonus. Nope, missed. Can you rearrange them and do it again? I wonder. Let's find out. You can. Well, now that's interesting. Oh, except I can't because of their arrangement. Never mind. Because you can't pull them, see? Level three. I really am the best at pingy.
and my cat is still snoring and it's kind of adorable it makes me want to pet her but I know she'll wake up if I do that and then she won't be snoring anymore anyway um, I think that's probably enough of that uh, Meg is snoring yeah, that's probably enough of that, I think. Anyway, that was Pengi by N.A. Murray, whoever the hell that is. Published by Red Rat Software for the Atari ST. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects MoeGamer.net where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 VideoPack computer also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.